Crab, and this is Walter Johnson. And uh, so we're, we're not going to hold you under too long today, okay? Listen to the bubbles. <laughs> okay, but I've got something from God's Word that I just want to share a couple of things. And uh, just to maybe wondering why in the world are we in a pool? Why are we baptizing people? Why do we put them under the water totally? And basically, there's a very simple reason. The Bible shows us very clearly in Scripture that when John went to baptize Jesus, Jesus, the perfect Son of God, he put him totally, he immersed him totally under the water, and then he came up in newness of life. What we're representing today here is each one of these people have made a decision for Jesus Christ. And in obedience, we want them to follow their obedient call into baptism, into water baptism. And so basically, there's just a couple of verses I'd like to share and um, to pass that on. So first of all, baptism, baptism doesn't save somebody. It does not, by going in this water, it doesn't wash someone's sins away. Only the blood, only the blood of Jesus Christ can do that. Water baptism does not do that, okay? So we want to really make that clear. Only a personal trust in Christ believing that you're a sinner and that Christ died for those sins. He's the only one that can uh, wash those sins away from our heart, no matter what you've done in life. And maybe today you're here and you're thinking, oh, I've done too many bad things. But today can be the day of your salvation also. So baptism doesn't wash uh, sins away. It's basically an outward sign of an inward act that's happened inside. The Holy Spirit has come inside of these people. And now there's newness of life in their life. You should be able to see, the Bible calls it fruit. You should be able to see some changes in, in these people. The, their countenance might be a little bit different and things like that. So it's just an exciting time for all of us to get to know each one of these candidates and, um, and to see this newness. So in Matthew 28, if the wind behaves on me, 19 and 20, the scripture says, uh, in verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So baptism, again, does not does not save our souls. And also, we are only saved through faith. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, For by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves, not of our own good works, but by faith through Jesus Christ we are saved. So today, as these four candidates come, we'll look at, we'll look at their lives and we'll say, they have each trusted Christ in their own life. We have one young lady that would like to share a testimony with you. And she asked me, I said, that's fine. We'd love that. If there's anybody else that would like to do that also, before you get baptized, just let us know. And that's, that's perfectly fine. This is a great time to do that. All right. So the order that we're going to have here is we're going to do Vivian Soma first. And that's her dad, Mark. And she's going to be first. Then we're going to have Douglas Jones. Where are you, Douglas? Okay. You'll be next. And we'll do Louis, Louis Colton. And then we'll do Kirsten, Kirsten Jaycock. Okay? So come on in, Mark.
struggles I'm having, I start crying again. And, that, and that's when I believe I became a Christian. Um, but Psalms is a very meaningful passage to me because it tells me how I want to live my life and how I don't want to live my life. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the paths of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and brings forth its fruit in the season, and whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners of the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Um, I wanted to say just a couple of things too, but I know that I only have a few minutes on my video recorder, so it should be real quick. But Vivian, you're you're my daughter, you're my you're my first child, and you are um, very very precious to me. You are uh, indeed um, the apple of my eye in, in so many ways. And as my child, you've inherited many things from me, and one of those things is sin. I gave you sin. The Bible says in Adam all of sin, and it goes to the male, which is why Jesus Christ is a perfect sacrifice, because he didn't have an earthly father. He's only one. And I'm sorry that I've given you sin. So often when I see you struggle, I see my own struggles in you. Um, but I have some fruit in your life, your mother and I have, and I am so proud of you. And in Christ, with the Holy Spirit, um, you can conquer the sins that you inherited from me. And I'll always be your dad, but it's my pleasure to give you to a much greater father, a father in heaven. And so it is with more joy than you can know that I have this privilege of baptizing you, my sister in Christ, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.